Why is the prevalence of autism, schizophrenia and other mental diseases increasing worldwide? How come that the mainstream science is clueless as to what is causing it? And why is the only available treatment drugs with severe side effects such as amphetamines, antipsychotics and SSRIs? What if I told you that there might be a cure and the way to heal yourself is not through conventional medicine? But first, did you know that having one mental illness increases the likelihood of having another diagnosis? For instance, if you're autistic, you have a higher probability of also having ADHD. This could be an indication that there is a root cause problem. Did you know that most of the cells in your body are bacteria living in symbiosis with you in your gut? Did you know that ADHD is speculated to exist due to a dopamine deficiency in the brain? And dopamine is to 50% created in the gut. Did you know that schizophrenia used to be referred to as bread madness? Because when bread was removed from the diet, some patients spontaneously recovered. Did you know that the now famous grain-free ketogenic diet was first invented to treat epilepsy in the 1920s? And patients with treatment-resistant epilepsy are still treated with the keto diet to this day. Did you know that there exists a comorbidity between mental disorders and digestive issues? Did you know that if you have an overgrowth of a specific yeast in your stomach that produces alcohol, you will become drunk without drinking? Did you know that some people have problems breaking down bread and milk, which upon consumption gets converted into opium-like substances in the body? And these substances are often found at elevated levels in autistic and schizophrenic patients. And finally, did you know that a parasite found in cat feces, if ingested, can make you more likely to commit suicide? Are you making the connection? What if mental disorders are not the disease of the brain? but rather a complex disease of the gut that affects the brain. This is by no means a new theory, and it has been postulated before. In 1807, the French psychiatrist Philippe Pinel, whose observations led him to the conclusion that the primary seat of insanity, generally, is the region of the stomach and intestines. In this video, I will focus on the gut and physiology syndrome theory by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride and her treatment protocol. She is a Russian neurologist, neurosurgeon and nutritionist who had an autistic son, but she managed to come up with a cure, despite mainstream science claims that this is impossible. And to this day, Dr. Natasha has proceeded to help people cure their mental disorders and digestive issues. Okay, so let's boil down her theory as simple as possible. In your gut, your bowels have a coating of good bacteria. These bacteria break down the food that you eat, which is crucial for your digestion. This healthy bacteria can be damaged by antibiotics, emulsifiers, bad nutrition and other toxic food additives, causing bad bacteria, fungi and parasites to take over in your gut. These bad bacteria make the intestine leaky, meaning that undigested food particles get into the bloodstream. The immune system reacts to these undigested food particles, which causes symptoms of food allergies in the body. The overgrowth of bad bacteria also makes you more sensitive to poisonous food additives, which if you eat them, leak into your blood. The bad bacteria also excrete substances, which causes you to crave carbohydrates, the food that much of the bad bacteria and yeast thrive upon. Thus your complex, and I need to underscore complex, ecosystem of bacteria, parasites and fungi gets disrupted, which leads to an overload of toxic substances in the body. The high load of these toxic substances will affect your brain, causing learning disabilities, autism, schizophrenia and other mental disorders. Ok, so assuming that this is the root cause of mental illness, then what is the cure? It's quite simple, really. First, you remove all the foods you're allergic to or give you bad digestion. This will reduce the inflammation of your gut and give it the right environment to heal in. Second, you remove all processed foods, starches, grains, sugars, non-fermented milk products and high fiber foods. This will reduce the toxic load on your body and the removal of the starches and sugars will remove the food that the bad bacteria lives on. Now you're left with only eating meat, fish, eggs, fermented dairy, 
fermented vegetables, berries, nuts, olive oil and fruit, which is very close to the keto, carnivore or paleo diet. It is also important to only eat organic food, since non-organic meat contains antibiotics which kill the good bacteria in your gut. Fourth, to start a GAPS diet, you will have to make your own meat stock by boiling meaty bones. Then you drink a couple of cups of this broth with a raw egg yolk in it throughout the day. Trust me, it tastes way less disgusting than it sounds. It just tastes like soup. This beverage would give you the nutrients that you need in order for your gut to heal. Fifth, you add good bacteria to your digestive system that can help you break down food. But how do you do this? Well, basically, you first let good bacteria grow in the food outside of the body and then you eat it. This is an ancient practice called fermentation and yogurts and sauerkraut and kimchi are examples of fermented foods. If you are really sensitive to vegetables, just drink the water that the vegetables is fermenting in. You can also get a good quality probiotic supplement, which is basically good bacteria in a pill. Six, as you heal for a couple of weeks, you start to reintroduce foods you previously been sensitive to. Start slowly with a small amount. If you get a bad reaction, let your gut heal for a bit more before trying again. Seventh, Generally, don't take supplements, but there are the ones you should take. Essential oil supplements with a 2 to 1 ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 containing LNA, LA, but also EPA, DHA and GLA. Sunlight to ensure an adequate vitamin D level, else a high quality vitamin D supplement. Stomach acid, betaine, HDL with added pepsin. And probiotics, which is taken separately from the stomach acid pills. What will happen is that the elimination of foods that irritate your bowels will give the gut the opportunity to heal and the meat stock with egg yolk will give it the right nutrients to make this possible. As you remove all sugars and starches, the bad bacteria, parasites and yeast such as candida will die. This makes it possible for the good bacteria from your fermented vegetable juice and fermented dairy to start to repopulate your bowels. As you start eating more foods, this good bacteria can now break it down and feed you with nutrients. And the healed gut will be able to absorb them without an allergic reaction. As your digestive ecosystem improves, your mental illness will also start to improve. And people have been reporting that parasites will leave their body as well. In a nutshell, that is the GAPS diet protocol. And if you want to try it and know the details, get the book or read up more on the internet. Join a Facebook group or a forum to discuss with other pioneers. But if it's this simple, why isn't this mainstream science? Doctors are great if you have bodily trauma such as broken bones or lacerations, but they are completely useless when it comes to nutrition and preventative medicine. A psychiatrist has no idea how the digestive system works and a gastroenterologist have no idea how the brain works. When you see the body as a holistic ecosystem rather than a sum of individual parts, it is easier to see how healthy habits can have a benefit towards treating a disease that can at first glance seem unrelated. However, this is where conventional scientific methods have a very hard time giving you answers, since science tend to want to isolate each different intervention from each other, so rather to look at what the effect would be of the combination of eating good bacteria, eating food for this good bacteria, removing additives, removing processed foods, removing simple carbohydrates, etc. Science tends to only want to isolate one parameter and only look at, for example, what the effect of eating one strain of bacteria would be. Thus it would take forever for conventional science to find the right combination of synergistic treatments for a disease. This is why the GAPS protocol can seem unscientific, since it doesn't care about isolating parameters but rather throw everything in the kitchen sink at the problem and hope that this will give the best possible opportunity for your gut ecosystem to recover. Another issue designing an experiment of proving that the GAPS diet works is that everyone has different types of food allergies, so even if you feed a group of people the exact same food, they will respond differently. So for each individual, you will have to first look at what they can handle and then slowly introduce new foods. 
but how would you measure statistical significance of this? Lastly, clinical trials are insanely expensive, so the funding has to come from somewhere. This could happen if, let's say, Nestlé patents a bacteria that aids digestion, but there will never be any scientific paper about the ability of meat stock to heal mental illness. Thus, I'm doubtful that conventional medicine will ever figure it out. So it's up to you to become a rogue scientist and start to make the experiments yourself. But why is the theory of healing with the GAPS protocol any better than, let's say, homeopathy, crystal healing or other pseudoscience, you might ask? Well, it is because there is a proposed physical mechanism behind why it's plausible that it will work. The scientific literature is there to back many of the individual pieces up. But it is just that Dr. Natasha has connected the dots. In addition to this, there is a lot of people who has already been helped by this, and you can look at their testimonies. One of his rituals every morning was he would pick up his little spoon, he would go red, 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 and he would just do that for a minute solid before deciding, okay, now I'm gonna start to eat. And 48 hours off of dairy, he got into his chair and goes, this is a red spoon, and started eating. And it was just, that was the moment where I was like, okay, you're never having dairy again. That's, there, there is clearly something to- I went on a really low carb diet. I stopped snoring the first week. Next, I started waking up in the mornings. I'd never been able to wake up in the mornings my whole life. Then I lost seven pounds the first month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. Like, and my psoriasis disappeared. And I had floaters in my right eye and they cleared up. It's like I have to cut out the goddamn greens. It's like, try it for a month. Okay. Within a week, I was 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%, and I've been better every single day. I'm better now, probably, than I've ever been in my life, and I haven't been taking antidepressants for a whole year. Thing. I've had gum disease since I was 25. You're not supposed to recover from gingivitis, and my gums are in perfect shape. Like, what the hell? I was diagnosed with personality borderline disorder. I cut out the sweets, like the donuts and the pastries. And then after that, I cut out the carbs, so the, the rice and the sweet potatoes and the potatoes. Last but not least, I cut out the bread. I just eat beef, fish, fats, butter, ghee, and I have chicharron. The feeling that I first felt was like a euph euphoric feeling. Within the first three days, I noticed like a the depression was lifting, the weight of the world was lifting, the little demon in my head that wouldn't stop talking and was overthinking and just doing, basically destroying my life just disappeared. It was quiet. A week went by, I'm just getting better and better. My mental state is just, it, it, it's never been stable for longer than 24 hours. It all feels very extreme. And for the first time in a long time, in almost a decade, I started feeling pure joy again. There has been nothing else that has worked for me. Uh, not medication, being vegan, or eating really healthy, which I was always told, you know, you eat healthy, you exercise, then everything will be fine and you'll be happy and mentally stable, but that wasn't the case. Subscribe if you want to, that would really help me out. Also, leave a like and share the video. Some closing thoughts. Many people report success with other diets than just this specific GAPS diet. And I think the common factor is that you stop eating processed crap. So some people can even have a short term success on a vegan diet until they deplete all stored nutrients in the body. The benefit with the GAPS diet is that it shows you how to over time build up tolerances to more foods so that you do not risk to become nutrient deficient. If the thesis of this video is true, one can also start to think of the implications for public health when they push the processed bug diet.